That's right. This is Bad Weather Fans, episode number 58. Mike Paseglia, Alex Benesowitz. It's the first time in a long time we're getting Alex's smile when episode starts. Typically, when we do these, it's after a bad Nick loss. I don't know. That's just been a weird circumstance. The only other time I can remember uh, starting off one of these episodes was with a good Nick win was after they defeated the Utah Jazz, which was way back when in early Austin Rivers game. Yeah, the Austin Rivers <laughs> game. But was it that? Was that the game? Anyway, you're watching more Knicks than I am. But yeah, so uh, who cares? To get yeah, to, uh, Nets <laughs> losers tonight. They fall to the Toronto Raptors, and the Knicks continue their hot streak. They make it eight wins in a row. We've got a lot to dissect on the uh, the Nets with the James Harden news. We've got the Knicks winning eight. Don't forget YouTube. Find this bad weather fans if you want to watch the video version. So uh, as I have said every other episode, and I'll start it again tonight. Alex, how are you? Oh, I'm phenomenal, dude. Phenomenal. I'm so excited that Pete Alonso had a big home run. No, I'm just kidding. I, I can't believe that they won eight in a row. It's like it's yeah. unbelievable right now. I, I'm I'm bouncing off the damn walls, dude. Like I, I couldn't even like focus on like you're like, hey, you ready to go on? I'm like, oh, I need like ten minutes. Right. <laughs> like, I was just like, I needed to ah, now you should, to, to chill. You know, I don't know. You should be excited. I mean, I I totally understand. Oh Knicks my have God. struggled for a while, and the four seed man. streak, the four seed. <laughs> uh, the, the Knicks are in play for it. I mean, they absolutely are in play for home court in the first round, and. They're continuing to play well. Julius Randle was a beast. The guy has proven that he's an MVP candidate, an All NBA player. Told you, uh, he's I been told awesome. you. No, you, you laughed you, at me. I yeah. didn't. I, I, yeah, okay, fair. I did laugh, but he had to put it together for more than a couple weeks. Right, now right, they're right. winning games. I'm sorry, but I can't. I can't. No, no, no. Somebody an they MVP were like the seven or eight three teams. games under 500. Right, right. They were around 500, a little under maybe. Yeah, when I said but it, but if, the last if he's going to play yeah, like right, this, right, yeah. and they're going to, and he's got them better. Then I'm going to say, yeah, you're right. He's an MVP candidate right now. I'll stand by the my conversation, take. not conversation. the MVP. Though, in, yeah, he's not going to win it. He's not going to get a vote win. or two. Yeah, yeah. If the Knicks don't lose a game for the rest of the season, I guess he could win it. <laughs> yeah, that, that would, you know, they have a better record than the Nets. That would be nuts. If, uh, <laughs> if they went under, if they're, but they're what, seven ish back of the There's Nets? 12 left now, 12 games left. So yeah, that'd yeah. be, that'd be a lot. That'd be hard to accomplish. Um, yes, no, I don't think that's too bad. But yeah, no, Knicks, Nick, I mean, they're the four seed. You're excited and, you know, it, 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 enjoy longest the winning streak, longest winning streak since the 54 win year when they ended the season. They won mm. like uh, 13 in a row and then lost and then won a few more. Like they ended like crazy. They got the two seed that year, which is nuts. People forget, you know, they were like, oh, it's the biggest game, regular season game since Lynn Sanity. Like, oh, give me a break, you casual fan. You haven't watched the Knicks in 10 years. Like, give me, you don't know what you're talking about, you know? So it's just, it, it's nothing bothers me more than that. When people like bring up, oh, Lynn Sanity was a bit like, come on, like relax. Right, right, right. Like Melo was here. And that was after that. And they won the division and got around to the playoffs after Lynn Sanity. So stop mentioning that as the last time the Knicks were good or relevant. It's not true. But anyway, I'm excited. Knicks are the four seed. They beat the Hawks. Sorry that Trey Young got hurt. I hope he's okay. But it definitely helped the Knicks and the game turned around because the Knicks were just fighting and clawing and they were down and they couldn't get over the hump. And Trey Young goes out and then fourth quarter was a different game. Yeah, and that was it. And uh, you know, Goodwin came in, and he was pretty good. And he was, yeah, no pun intended. He and he kept these hitting throw, shots. A killer. Yeah, but he's, you know, he's he's not, he's, he's not a star. He shouldn't be no, in, in those moments. Him. Yeah, Still you know, the big free throw. He did. He did. That was a shot. You know, you get one shot, one opportunity. You no, know, can you capture it? <laughs> and uh, he he didn't, and that was great and good for us. And you know, if if I hope Trey Young's okay, I don't wish injury on anybody. You know, I got to say the right things. But you know what? If he's out for a little bit, then that's huge for the Knicks because then they're going to get the four seed. And if they just stabilize and they can get the four seed, because the Haw- even if he's out for two weeks, that's huge. You know, that's the well, Haw- the Hawks course, have a lot of guys, a lot of player. talent, but yeah, he's their best player, he's a star player. Take it off the team. And, you know, not every team like the Nets have four star players or three. That they can just, you know, hey, let's play Kyrie tonight. Hey, let's right. play Harden tonight. Hey, let's play this guy tonight. You know, yeah. so and the net I, I know um I didn't pay attention to one second. I didn't Google nothing yeah, about that. I was like so focused on the Knicks today. Like yeah, and I mean, that's just with Go a ahead. lack of bodies tonight on a back to back in Toronto or I guess in Tampa Bay it was a tough game for them. They hung in tough yeah. though. They had a chance to cut it at the very end. Uh, they just ran out of gas and were unable to get the win. And what sucked too was the fucking mm-hmm. Phoenix Suns go out and defeat the Sixers. So as much as the chaos is surrounding the Nets, and this is what's been so fascinating to me about Brooklyn, is they're one game out of the one seed. They're having their best this statistical win loss season since the 0102 season. They're playing great basketball. Mm-hmm. They're they're they they would be on pace for their most wins in franchise history. And there's a feeling of underachievement right now because of all the injuries that are swirling around this team. 
So right. that's a whole nother ball of wax, and we can get into that later. But that's making for just a weird phenomena for Net fans and how they feel about this season because they're 39 and 20, yet it feels like they're not good. And it's a weird feeling right now. And then on the other side of things, you got the Knicks who are on this eight game winning streak. RJ Barrett's developed, Julius Randle's playing well. Noel's getting blocks down low. You see quickly with clutch threes and everything going mm-hmm. right for them. So it's just, uh, you know, I. I've had all these people. Surreal. Ask, I've had all these people <laughs> ask me, like, Mike, are you upset that the Knicks are winning? Of course, I'm upset about it. Or like, or like, why like, wouldn't you be? Yeah. Like, yeah, I hate the Knicks. It sucks <laughs> to see that. I'm happy for you, I guess, but I, yeah. I hate to see it. Uh, I don't want to see them this successful. But I will say this: it's kind of fascinating, Alex. Because remember when, if the Knicks were where they were before, like seven seed, a game over five hundred, a game under five hundred, and kind of tick tocking back and forth. I didn't want yeah. any part of the Knicks. I will say this has gotten me to feel competitive, where I'm like, I want to see the Knicks. I want to beat them. Like I'm now seeing them and I have more respect for them where I want the Nets to play them. I want to fuck them up and shut everybody up. I've kind of changed my mentality on it after Mm. seeing how well they played and shit at this point, it would be in the second round. I'm like, you know what? Bring me the Knicks, bring me the Nick fan and let's go. Yeah, because it's different. I, I hear what you're saying. It's different when the Knicks are like the seven, eight seed, barely got in the playoffs, probably wouldn't have played in tournament game and get in and then mm-hmm. face the Nets in the first round. There's nothing to gain from that. Like the Knicks they had no business. Now the Knicks are like a legitimate, not contender. They're not going to win the title. No, but they're, they're a they're legitimate a good team. playoff team. Yeah, legitimate, you know, second tier team in, in the Eastern Conference. And it's, it's, you know, I, I get you. I get you. You know, mm-hmm. that would be a good series win. That would be a quality series win. You know what I mean? And that's that's the whole thing where it's like the whole world is upside down right now, man. It just doesn't make any sense. Like, this team doesn't make any sense. It's Julius Randle's just out of control and it, like in a good way. And, you know, they lose Alec Burks and everybody panics. I'm like, relax, it's Alec Burks, and they still win another three games in a row. <laughs> it's just like, you know, Bullock has been been crazy and, and uh, quickly he's been hitting his shots. And Derek Rose has been incredible. I got to tip he's my hat. Great to him man like I, I wasn't happy about the trade because i thought that that tip was going to force him down our throats which he kind of did mm. in the beginning and now he's in this kind of backup role where he comes in and he runs a second unit and he is perfect and that was a great deal and i gotta admit i was wrong about that but i mean the compensation they gave up was obviously fair i mean to give a second round pick of dennis smith jr i mean that's a great deal for derrick rose yeah but like i didn't think he fit but he does clearly, so I was wrong. But um, I'm happy. I'm happy to be wrong about something like that. <laughs> no, of know? course. So, no, of course. You know, I, no, I, I, I totally understand that. And, mm-hmm. and it, 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 again, it just changes your perspective on the whole season where things are going. And it all right. stems down to Randall. Like that guy's been amazing. He, he's been, he's been the centerpiece for this team. And you watch him down the stretch tonight. He's either going to the basket. He's, he's hitting that shot on the right side, uh, fading to the basket. They do the pick and roll where he has the solo matchup and nobody can guard him. And then when he gets in the paint, he's able to, you know, find the, make the right pass. So either way, pick your poison. He was beating up and destroying the Atlanta Hawks. And he really just did anything he wanted with them. And that's where it all stems from. And if the Knicks have what I think, and you look at Julius Randle as an all team NBA player, he's probably going to be, I bet you he's like third team all NBA is when it boils down. I don't know exactly what's in front of me and the players. We can yeah, break that who down. Knows, yeah. But the point is he's playing at an all NBA level and that changes everything. If he's there, the Knicks have a chance to win games every night. And that's the bottom line. Right, right. He's the star that they were looking for. And, mm-hmm. it, it, you know, I, I thought he could be all-star caliber when I got him last year. He's playing and people laughed at me. But I didn't think he'd be this good. This is like, this is all NBA caliber. Sure. At a different level than all-star. <laughs> like, you know, so, you know, it, it's incredible. But it, it's it's just, it shows like, you know, you work hard and you bust your ass. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Knicks fans might trash you in the beginning. And New, York, and New York fans in general. Even Nets fans, even Yankees fans, Mets fans, whoever you are. Rangers, Islanders, who cares? If you stink, we're gonna tell you you stink. If you're good, we're gonna tell you you're good. If you right. work hard, we're gonna appreciate you, no matter what you do. <laughs> like you know, it's just it just is what it is, and it sh- goes to show you. And and Randall and R.J. Barrett have a great chemistry, and quickly, and 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 even Toppin played played well tonight. And it's just crazy. Toppin comes in, has this breakaway dunk, and then Tibbs like sits him down like two seconds later. It's like, can you let this kid like get some yeah. get some going, get going a little bit? You know, it's it's weird, but I can't complain. I, I'm I'm happy. I, I'm like, I, it's incredible. The Knicks can beat any team. And and it's it's fun, man. Just keep it going. Like when you get on these winning streaks, you just got to keep it going. Because mm-hmm. like when you get towards the end of the games, you you start to believe like we can do this. We're gonna win this game. Like yeah. we won the last. We haven't lost in a month. And I think <laughs> there know? was that so, point where the where the Knicks were losing all those heartbreak games, and right. they looked from it. They grew from it, and now they're showcasing that down the stretch they can win games. And all of those tough losses have now mm-hmm. translated into games that they can win. And tonight was another. Uh, example of that is that in overtime they went in and then the thing was done in a sec. I know Atlanta got it close at one point, made it five or six in the in the overtime, 
but yeah, that, that game was, you know, that, that you could feel the energy of the Knicks and the difference of what they had gone through in the past, enabling them to make a win. And I said it earlier, you know, Trey Young's hurt. This is a different game if he's in there. I don't know who's winning the game. I'm, I'm not. I'm not one of those people that are like, well, if Trey Young was there. There's no way the Knicks would have won. I don't know. But the yeah, point I is, mean, you take advantage yeah. of the mistakes. They're not mistakes. You take advantage of the mishaps that happen. And that's part of it. I mean, you got to deal yeah. with that. I mean, that's just part of the game. I mean, it sucks. But you think the Toronto Raptors gave a shit that uh, that Kevin Durant and James Harden didn't no. play? No, you play what's in front of you and you win. So there's like, you, who cares? If I'm, I'm, right. from, I'm, I'm from a Nick perspective, you got the win. That's you, it. If Trey Young's that, you, what are they supposed to stop and, and you know, say, hey, you Let's know what? Suspend the game until he's healthy. Then it was yeah. up seven or whatever it was when he got hurt. <laughs> Let's move yeah, it wasn't on. like so they're up 30. Yeah, exactly. But if, the, if, if the Hawks don't have Trey Young, I mean, they're cooked. Then yeah, definitely. They're going to they're gonna slip because they don't have enough. And I, as much as I like Atlanta and their young pieces, and Bogdanovich is a very good player. And Clint Gallinari, he's not, he wasn't healthy. Banged up at the end, can play. Yeah, yeah. They, they've got a roster. they got players. But without Trey Young, I mean, That's it's just, nothing. it's almost like Julius Randle. I would say, I, I think Randle's more important and valuable to the Knicks than mm-hmm. Young is to the Hawks. But the point is, if they lose him, just like if the Knicks lost Randall, it's over. Yeah, yeah. And the next three games, you got the Raptors, Suns, and Bulls at home before you go out west. So you have to win two of three there. You have to win those. The and the Raptors three. got uh, the Raptors got Van Vliet, and they got Lowry back tonight. So that was a oh, big did. addition for them because uh, mm. they've been playing terrible. But getting those two guys back, obviously the different Raptors team, and the Nets never beat mm-hmm. Toronto for whatever reason. Yeah, I don't but understand. But they do get that. them back, so those are big pieces for Toronto. So I think mm-hmm. they're 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 not good, but I think they're maybe just a little bit better than maybe what their record says. Got it, got it. No, and and you know, um, Raptors always seem to find guys like Malachi Flynn and just like guys just come out of yeah. nowhere and they're just like really good. <laughs> they're just like a really great yeah. drafting organization, and that's how they win, you know. But. Not this year, I guess. Well, it doesn't help that they're playing every game on the road pretty much for them. Right. So, but um, I don't know. I'm just excited. I'm just so I, yeah. I can't, I have nothing else to say. Um, uh, the Trae Young got hurt. What I was going to say, Trae Young got hurt, but also the Knicks lost both of their centers. Like they only right. had two centers and, and they lost two guys and they were down. And Taj Gibson, Gibson got like hit in the eye by Solomon Hill and, and it was like, scratched his eyeball or something they said a, like a scratched eye or something it was crazy it's like yo cut your nails dude like, like what's going on like how are you cutting yeah. his eyes like you know and then um noel got elbowed in the in the lip and he cut his lip and it was so funny like Knicks fans are so hyped up that noel comes back in about a quarter later or so and he gets a standing ovation like he cut his lip guys like <laughs> relax like he'll be okay he's all right dude. Been a while. He didn't like limp out like Willis Reed. You know what I'm saying? Like, but it, we're just excited. And I'm like, I love it, man. I'm, I'm excited. So I don't know. What do you like? Nah, how did the Nets I, look tonight? I, I don't even know. Like, the Nets looked terrible you know, tonight. To, they didn't yeah. play well. They cut it to three. They cut it to five at one point, made their run. Uh-huh. And uh, Bruce Brown yeah. was great. He's been awesome. Here's my point I want to make about the Nets. I think this is an interesting one. And it kind of yeah. shuffled through my brain. And I think. I think anybody that watches the Nets on a day-to-day basis would tell you this, but I think people from the outside, the national media, and people that don't watch the, the Nets every day might not yeah. understand this. The Brooklyn Nets aren't a team about three superstars. The Nets win games because they're scrappy, they play hard, and they hustle. I know that's, that people might not understand that because the national narrative is they don't play defense and they don't care. But if you were mm-hmm. to watch this Nets squad over the last month, they remind me more of the Kenny Atkinson Nets than anything else. They've got guys in Bruce Brown, Landry Shamit. Uh, Alizé Johnson that are hustling Nicholas Claxton that are hustling their ass off their stars don't play games okay like they're, mm-hmm. they're just not playing right now there's been one guy in the other guy I mean it's been one star at a time that's what we've seen right now so for them they're wi- but they're still winning basketball games and they're winning because they're playing hard and they're hustling and they're giving a shit I mean you saw it in the Nets Knicks game where the Nets beat the Knicks the Knicks the Nets came out in that third quarter and blitzed them not because of their superstars Harden was out it was just Ky- yeah. it was just Kyrie. It was because Joe Harris was hustling, Nicholas Claxton was hustling. So I want I want people to understand when the this net squad, they're winning games without the stars because they are trying and they are hustling and they are giving everything they have. So uh, that, mm-hmm. that that's the part that excites me that when the stars do come back and you know knock on wood it all works. This is not a team that's about three guys and everybody just stands around and shoots. They give a shit, and they're really tr- playing hard. Like Blake Griffin's been good. 
You know, th- there's been so much that's happened in the last 10 days with the Nets. It's interesting. Like the Knicks have gone on this blitz winning streak where they finally put it together and they're putting right. all, everything all, all at once. It's stirring. It's working. The Nets have had this fucking insane week. LaMarcus Aldridge retires because of a heart condition. We find that I out. I forgot about that. Yeah. I mean, that that's was, like yeah. old news at this point. The Heat yeah. game with a terrible loss. Then we find out about James Harden. Come, Durant re-injures himself, but it's just a completely different injury. Nothing to do with anything. He's it's gonna a contusion. be contusion. Okay. He'll be fine. Harden, it's a right, bruise. Harden yeah. then <laughs> with the news about the hamstring, and it's like the 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 the, the whole the sky's falling in. Meanwhile, the Nets are one game out of the one seed, and the, <laughs> everybody else is playing their ass off. So I, mm. I my my message to everybody is. Just, just relax a little bit. It's not yeah. as bad as it seems. And I do think, like, from my end, with the Knicks winning so many games, a perception of the Nets season being down when it's like they're still right there. And I, maybe yeah. I'm just trying to remind myself of that. Maybe you are, but it's it's still crazy. I mean, it's wild to think, but, like, the Knicks are only um, six and a half games away from the Nets. <laughs> like, nine, 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 it's 12 left. Obviously, they're not going to catch them. I'm just, like, kidding. Yeah. But it's just it's just – you would think like in the beginning of the season, Nets are like this super team and the Knicks are like this crap and like they're not too far apart. I mean, no, like, but, I, obviously but, but, the Nets have had their issues and whatever. Yeah. I'm not saying they're comparable. But I would say paper. it's more because of the Knicks overachieving than the Nets right. underachieving. Right, and right, I do right, think I there was some part of this season that was going to be a little helter-skelter because of the way the mm-hmm. schedule is built. The back-to-backs, teams playing all over the place, the home-homes and not the home and aways. This schedule is different, so I don't think you were going to have a team that was going to go 60 and 20. I would say if there was 80 two games the best team in the east might have 53 to 55 wins and then factor that the knicks are overachieving so that's why the gap's that close in my viewpoint i mean the knicks have been awesome and the nets yeah. in the last i mean the nets in the last 10 games are probably like six and four you know not bad it's just kind of been bumbling back and forth but I, yeah but no, I, I think there is something true. to that but i'm like I'm looking at all these playoff matchups, Alex. I'm fucking excited for the playoffs. There's going to be really oh, yeah. good games. Like, you could have Nick Celtics 4 5 first round or 5 4 or Nick's. I don't want that. Or man. It could I'm be, scared I mean, of the Celtics. I'm scared who, of the Celtics. Who, I mean, man. okay. Well, who, okay. Now, like, if you're the four seed, realistically, it's going to be the Celtics or the Heat. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's damn, going to be one scary. of those. Or you're, or you're the six and you go to Milwaukee. What do you well, pick? it depends if Kemba's healthy. If Kemba's healthy, the Celtics are a totally different team. And that's scary in itself. And the heat, I don't want to face because of the freaking heat. You know what I mean? They were just in the finals. I mean, you know who I want? I want to play the Hornets, obviously, but that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Knicks would sweep the Hornets. But like the Hawks, if, if the Hawks, if Trey Young's healthy, the Knicks Hawks series will be like dynamic. You can see it tonight. Like they're both like evenly matched teams. They're going to chuck up some threes and it's going to be like no defense and Trey Young's going to flop. And it's just going to be like, it's going to be one of those great series. Like, I uh, man, I don't know who I want to. I, I guess the Hawks I'd want to play because I feel like they, you know, I'm just scared of the Celtics and Heat, but it might just be the uniform at this point and not really the uh, the team. Sure, you know what I'm saying? Like the Heat and Celtics are experienced and they win first round matchups all the time. And you know, I want I want to face the path of least resistance. <laughs> like you know what I mean? I don't right. care who it is. But you, you know, that, give me anybody. You pick yeah. that over going to Milwaukee. Oh yeah, for real. Definitely. Or being in the play in and then de- and they and then being in the play in and then see what I mean happens. they're only three, four games away from Milwaukee in the three seed. Let's go. Let's go keep winning. <laughs> like, you oh, know, let's that go. Be That'd be- the Knicks ended up as the three seed. Oh, holy shit. That- <laughs> that, I, I, do think it, yes. I do think with that West Coast trip, that would be difficult to get yeah. I mean, the Knicks, I think the Knicks are playing awesome, but to see them finish the season on a 21 game winning streak. No, it's not gonna happen. I don't know if that's realistic. No, no, no. Sorry, well, the, so the next three, like we said, we have the Raptors, uh, Suns, and Bulls at home. So you hope they win two of three. If they win all three, that's incredible. And then you could just cruise on the West Coast. But the West Coast, you got Rockets and Grizzlies back to back. Then you have Rockets, uh, day off. The, oh my God, we're, we're, <laughs> win lost. Grizzlies tough. No, no, yeah, yeah. Rockets, Grizzlies back to back. Grizzlies got Jaron Jackson back today, which is crazy. So they're they're stacked for the playing tournament. So you got Rockets, Rockets, Grizzlies back to back. Then you have the Nuggets. Suns, uh, Clippers, Lakers who are getting healthy, and that's the that's end of the t- trip. Yeah, those are I mean, yeah, yeah those are that's tough, a tough games. trip. Yeah, you can't throw the you can't give me a Kings game in there somewhere. <laughs> I throw me like some uh, throw me a different kind of already. like. Well, it's just yeah, so no. we, it's you know the weird yeah. part about these trips is like you could see mm-hmm. a team on the schedule and it might not really mean that. You know, if you right. find if you play the Lakers or Clippers on the right night, it could be really yeah. Easy. Like the last time Knicks played the Lakers, no LeBron right. or Anthony Davis, and you know. 
And but, who yeah. knows? but I but like to me, they're going to be back by then. Yeah. The Lakers, and I would think the Lakers. I don't know if LeBron will. I think the Lakers will be. I feel like the Lakers will be going for it then because of how mm-hmm. much they've struggled with their guys out. But my point is, you just don't know. You don't know which team you're going to play. It could be, you know, maybe the Nuggets rest Nikola. Um, you know, or excuse me, the Joker because uh, Jokic, yeah, yeah. The, uh, Jokic. Getting my same thing, yeah, same, same thing. <laughs> maybe they, may, maybe they, they, you know, jokers out because they don't, you know, the seeds are resting. You, yeah. you just don't know. So yeah, you don't know what's you know, going the on. The schedule can be can be weird. Like Memphis, to me, you know, they're going to be playing. Yeah, no, they're going because they're trying to get that playing tournament. And you know, the last three games of the year at home, you got Spurs, okay, whatever. But then the last two are crazy implications of the Eastern Conference: Hornets and Celtics. They end the season with the Celtics. So you imagine you end the season against the Celtics clinch whatever you need to or don't clinch whatever you need to and then you play them in the first round that's tough because then it'd be like like you know a preview matchup for your first round matchup i, I i'm scared yeah. of the celtics man i don't want the celtics i don't want anything to do with the celtics that's so funny I know they've been, yeah the celtics, I just, the celtics i i want like as i i the celtics know. don't bother me but me, but i i don't know i i because i i don't like i just my hierarchy of annoyance this is this is a, this is true um yeah this is interesting I watched the Sixers and I hate the Sixers. Mm-hmm. I watched the Knicks and I don't hate the Knicks. I just hate what the Knicks symbolize. You know what I mean? Like I actually like you hate them. like the fans. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I don't hate the fans. I don't want to say that. Yeah, you then do. everybody yeah. listening's like <laughs> at Nick72 that tweets at me, hey Mike, did you see the game? You hate me? No, I don't I, I don't you know what I mean. A healthy rivalry. I don't like the Knicks fan. Yeah, yeah, I no, I gotcha. Don't dislike the Knicks. The Sixers, mm-hmm. it's like Simmons doesn't stop yapping, and Bead's annoying. You know, it's like they're they yeah, get they're on, not a likable team. Yeah. yeah, I like Tobias they're... Harris. Other than that, they're just not a likable team. Nets Sixers <laughs> yeah. in the playoffs had a nice little yeah. like a little heated exchange, but it, it's like so I in my hierarchy and then the, and then the Celtics have just always been with the Boston thing. So those two teams I actually dislike more than the than the Knicks, but it's just the whole Nick thing. But but point I'm making is or just kind of coming back, the Celtics don't scare me as much as they scare you. Yeah, I, I just – I've seen Tatum hit too many big shots against the Knicks and and just – I don't know, man. Some, something about it. I, I don't know. I don't know. what. I mean, the Knicks the last – three times they've been in the playoffs, twice they played the Celtics in the first round. So, like, right. back, or dating back to the Mellow years. I mean, they had the Heat and the Celtics twice. And it's just – I don't know, man. <laughs> just yeah. like, I, 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 you know, I rather face the heat because I think there's a lot to the heat being in the bubble and being totally like drained from that experience and going to the finals and then having to restart and Tyler Harrow's out, you know, you know, dating celebrities and doing whatever he's doing. Yeah. And I think that they're just going through the motions this year, waiting for next year. And like, I, I mean, I know Jimmy Butler doesn't play that, but you know, I, I don't know. I think that this is their year to just be like, all right, we're, you know, we're happy to be here and like, you know, see you later. So I don't know, but we got to see how the playing tournament goes. That's crazy. Knicks could have like the wizards or something in the first round. You know, you never know what's going to, I mean, I guess he can't cause it's a seven, you know, it'll be uh or the next might, the Knicks. right. The Knicks might fall in the play. And I'm, I'm not saying fall, I don't, yeah. I wouldn't bet on it, but no, as I much as they're, they're only a couple games up. So it just, you know, things can flip fast as we've seen week right. to week on this podcast. We all feel different. Yeah, no, we got to enjoy the moment, though, Knicks fans. We yes. just have to enjoy this moment. I agree with Enjoy that. the jersey that I'm wearing, the Starks jersey. Just enjoy the moment and just have fun. And, like, because sure. remember in the beginning of the season when they won a couple games in a row, we're like, all right, let's just enjoy this. Yeah. Enjoy the ride. Talk your shit. Like, whatever, because you know what? It's not going to last. Well, guess what? It lasted. So just enjoy this moment because back in the, the, the 54 win year with Melo, we're like, all right, we'll be back. You know what I mean? Like, we'll be right. good. You know, I know they were old, but like, you didn't think that they were going to, that this was going to happen. You know what I mean? It's always like that. You have to enjoy the moment. You have to be live in the now. You, we talk about the Mets 2006, the Beltron stares at the curveball. And you're like, all right, we'll be back. This team is stacked. No. You know what I mean? Like, so it's just, you have to, you have to enjoy the moment while you can you know we're older we're in our 30s let's talk to the kids right now like enjoy okay, every I'm time a kid. You're in the playoffs. you i'm a kid i'm enjoy every time that. you're older than me bro I'm i dye my hair gray <laughs> do you it just yeah, man. More it makes me look hot yeah no there you go no it's just it, you have to you have to just live in the now and enjoy the moment it's just it's just incredible and so nice to just shove it in everybody's face about the Knicks who have been talking trash the last two three years it's just so so nice and it, it just feels good man and I know I was down on the Knicks in the offseason because I, I feel like they could have done more. And I really do feel like they could still feel like they could have done more. Like Bogdanovich could have been on, on the Knicks. You know what I mean? They could have yeah. still had 
They easily had Bogdanovich and still had Reggie Bullock and still had Alec Burks and still had all the guys they signed and still have plenty of cap space. You know, that's somebody that they easily could have signed or Gallinari who's been hurt. So maybe that wasn't the best idea, but somebody like that, you know, then look at, then look at this team. Like then where, you know, Bogdanovich was like crushing. It was the reason why this game went into overtime. You know, he was, he was, he's a really good player, you know? So he might be a little overpaid, but who cares? You have all this cap space you're hoarding anyway. So I don't know. It's just, I'm excited. I was a little wrong about how the Knicks were going to be, but who gives a damn? I'm I'm happy. I'm here, and that's it. And th- how fun is this, man? How fun is this that we're doing this podcast and both the Knicks and the Nets are good in our first? We're almost coming on a year since we started this podcast, right? It's April. It might be, actually be a year, to be honest, because I'd have to look. I can yeah. scan my phone real fast. Let's see. Let, let me see. see. Let me see. Yeah, well, we gotta we gotta figure this out because you want me to you honestly want me to time or are you talking about? No, well we can talk if you want to talk. Oh, oh okay. yeah. yeah. April sixth. Oh, so it was a year. That was when our first uh, first what, podcast what we on doing? Bad Weather fans because we did a few on on uh, Mike delivers, as you know. Yeah, like three it, on there. What are we in mid April? Yeah, so it's been a year. April twenty first. Yeah, been over yeah, a little over a year, and, Which makes and we sense finally, we went a while with no sports. Yeah, fifty eight yeah. episodes. I guess we did we, a couple took, too. Yeah, we did one two in one weekend when um, Tibbs was hired and Jamal Adams was traded, and then uh, like right after we finished recording, mm-hmm. we're like, oh my god, we got to go on again. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to okay, talk about. That makes sense. Yes. And then we, we took a couple of weeks off in, in between, you know, and so like, you know, it evens out. It evened out a little bit. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm happy. This has been fun and, you know, I'm having a great time. It's getting this podcast is growing and people love it. And, and I'm really happy to be doing this. And, you know, so here we go. I'm, you know, I nobody wants to hear about my fantasy basketball team, but, I'm, you know, I'm doing well. And that too, I'm in the playoffs beating my boy Sean right now, who always listens. So like, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, man. This is what we're doing. And you know, I, I can't be in a better place right now. Sports wise with the Mets are playing well. I mean, I know they lost, I think tonight, but who cares? Well, they were down 16 to four in the ninth. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> I, I'm just so happy, man. I, I can't put into words like how happy I am about the Knicks right now, because this is just like surreal. This is not, you can't even compare them to, I know you wanted to compare them to the Nets in 2019, but you can't, it's not the same because the Nets were like, people forget that year. You don't forget, but that year, like the last couple of games of the season, they almost didn't make the playoffs. They had to win a couple in a row at the end of the season just to make the playoffs. And like, they got the six seed and, but they were only like a game or two above the eight seed or, you know, and it's something like crazy that year, right? Yeah, they I had mean, to fight to the end. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the Knicks might have to do the same too. You don't know yet. Right. We don't know yet. Exactly. But, but but I but 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 I mean the idea it's a weird the, comparison. no it's not yeah. but it's the, the the idea to compare is the excitement yes my excitement yes, level you know I unexpected excitement I don't know team, what it's like to have uh, you know orange and blue run through my veins so I imagine that makes you just more excited in general about your basketball right. team but smarter and louder as well yeah you know so, so I was excited <laughs> so you know for for the team just to see them playing that well in the development. And all the similarities between the two teams, uh, Randall's playing better than um, um, than Russell did. But the same idea: you got two, you got two cast off Lakers that become all stars in the same year. Right. You got Karis LeVert becoming a bit, you know, a, a, a nice shooting guard development with the RJ Barrett's team hustling, playing hard, the whole deal. So I remember the excitement and how I was mm-hmm. feeling with it. So that I do remember, and I remember the winning streaks that would happen and all the bad losses that happened. And in a weird way, I'm jealous of you because. And I think when the playoffs come, we'll, we'll sort of be the Nets season, to be yeah. honest. But like that year for the Nets, it was so exciting because there were no expectations. They blew they 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 blew them out of the water. They made the playoffs, and then it was just so much fun to see that and feel that after years of having ba- a couple of years of having bad basketball. Uh, and I'm not as not as and the Nets came from the abyss and how they got out of those that trade to get where they are. Just like mm-hmm. the Knicks have been bad for the last eight years or whatever it is right. so for them to get back there so that was that excitement level so i'm jealous in a lot of ways because i feel like the nets this season even though there's been a lot of winning they're winning two out of every three times they fun. play yeah it hasn't been as fun because like in the in the games they've been blowouts and they've been great and they've been awesome but there hasn't been like this excitement that i've had like this energy because there's so many questions swirling around Mm. And this is not one of those things where people go, see, you put together a super, st- super, no, it's super not. team. It can't be the same. No, it's the fact that I don't know how Harden's health is. Durant always goes in and out. Can this team last and get to the playoffs? Is Kyrie going to show up? Yeah. 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 
No, and that's that's the thing. If if you had all three stars on your team and they were healthy and they were crushing it, like the Heat big three when they were like LeBron, Wade, and Bosch right. were crushing it and, and like they had that long winning streak and you, that was probably so exciting <laughs> for, for a Heat fan. For you now, it's just right. excruciating. Like, yeah, they're the two seed and they're playing well, but like, like how, how do you, you know, how do you get confident that they're going to do this in the playoffs? Like, you can't be, you know what I mean? You, you, you can't, you can't, you can't be, be, and it's just, well, yeah, you can't be, but you can, like, because you still have the, the, you know, if they're healthy, if, if, if it's a big if, but if they are, that they're obviously going to cruise and to the first is, two this rounds. Is of the so fun. This is what's so yeah. funny to me, too, because I like the talking heads go on. Like, I see this all the time. Mm. Uh, and, oh, the Nets, they can't, this is not their year. They can't do it. If they haven't, mm. if they don't have enough reps under their belt together, there's no shot they can win it. Or other people go, fine. when these three come together, they'll flip it on and be good. I don't, I mean, I understand you come on and you have to be paid. And even us, we're being entertaining right now. And it's about giving our opinions. But at the same time, it's like, how does anybody really fucking know? Nobody, Nobody does. Knows. Nobody mm. knows what it's going to be like when the, when Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving and James Harden get on the court together with all of the role players playing as well as they have. The Nets bench is the reason they're winning games. All right. The Nets bench is what's doing it. Nobody knows what they're going to be like. Like this is, and if we're so in the moment, you know, it's going to be like game one Nets versus heat NBA playoffs. Can they do this? No, I like the heat and six they got last year. And then those three of them come on the court. They win by 41. It's just in that, but, but that's what I'm saying with this regular season. I'm just like I just I just need you don't know what to feel. Get, yeah, yeah, I'm just like I just need to get there. We'll do it, and then here we go, and this is it. Remember this too: if the Nets are in the playoffs and want to make the run that I think they can make, that's a three month run to win an right. NBA championship. Three months. The this playoffs team are ridiculous. Hasn't been long. healthy yeah. for fucking three months. That scares mm-hmm. me. Three months of them healthy, <laughs> like we haven't seen that at all. That's crazy. No, and I, I'm i asking you this because I don't watch every Nets game like you, but does Steve Nash get credit for having this team together and being in the two seed with no, everybody he injured? Every... Credit. He doesn't. The, it, yeah, no, what... no. Like, should he get credit is my question. Like, and should he, he get sh- yeah, yeah, He should. And that's a good point because everybody goes, oh, they got the three stars. They got this. Right. But if you look at this Nets season from total to start to end, the completely different roster, he's had the, they've had like some wacky stat where it's like 39 different starting lineups. I mean, just like bizarre things. So as consistent as the Knicks have been, the Nets have been the exact opposite with everything. Nash is bringing this guy in. Nash is bringing that guy in, making changes. And he's made his mistakes. But for the most part, because the talent hasn't been as, you know, I think as obvious as people think, or as, um, as people think there's more talent there than there has been, he's done a hell of a job. And it also mm-hmm. just shows, too, the value of James Harden that the Nets are a 500 basketball team without him. Yeah, it's crazy. And that's, you know, that's just, he's that good. You know, you saw what he did with the Rockets and like, you know, I know they had some stars him. in and out of there, but I it was him. his team. I miss Yeah. Him. That's your guy. Yeah, now, I, right? I that's miss him. I miss watching him play. I want to see all these guys together. So, you know. <laughs> Because it's it's not like like we like we just said they're not a very likable team and it's not just because they're the Nets and I dislike them and I admit that and whatever but it's just they're just not a they're not likable they're they're just not they they built the team the way that everybody hates they built the team the way that the the stereotypical way that everybody hates about the NBA and what people trash about the NBA that's the way they built their team and the, it's true and and like because you get the stars that's fine that was fine but then when you like. Get Harden, who who uh, you know who who yes 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 tanks his way out of the Rockets just to get traded and, and screws that franchise over. I you know I know they didn't give him the the town. I mean, but they did give him the town. They gave him like Mellow and Westbrook and Chris Paul and Dwight. Like, what the hell do you need? You know what I mean? You just couldn't do it. It's not really the Rockets' fault, but we don't know what happened there. So you don't know why he wanted to leave. He didn't like the owner apparently. So you got to give him the benefit of the doubt there, but. At the same time, it that's kind of part of why it's not that exciting for you because it's you know deep down this is not the this is not a very likable team. Even though if they were on the all on the court and healthy, they'd be crushing it. You'd be so no, excited. That, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't no, know. The Maybe there's something part, there. You know what I mean? I don't think there's something with a likable team because in my view, when the guys are on your team, they're likable. You love what's on your you love what's in your jersey. And the right, way they like Theo Pinson, right? The way they built <laughs> yeah, Theo, the, wherever he's the magic man. The way they built yeah. the team with the stars, though. To uh-huh. me, was was brilliant in the sense of they built it through having a culture, they built it through having a strong organization, mm-hmm. and then they signed Durant and Kyrie Irving without giving up assets. Right, that's what right. they did. That was brilliant. Most teams, when they sign and get two superstars, look at the Clippers. They had to ship shit away. They had to trade guys. They had to move pieces. The Nets didn't do that. 
the Nets, they made one trade where they had to take on Torian Prince's contract. Okay, whatever. The point is they built it so that they, they just added guys to come in and they were able through the ground up develop Karis LeVert, which was an, they, they traded an expiring contract that, to get, they, they tr- the Nets traded Thaddeus Young to the Pacers, got an, ex- got, they got a draft pick in return. And then that pick became Karis LeVert, developed Karis LeVert. The Nets did the same thing. Bojan Bogdanovic, they traded it him to the Wizards. They got their pick in return. They drafted Jared Allen. These were the picks. They they didn't have draft picks. Remember, they went to the Celtics. They had so the cap Nets, space and no picks. They right? had they no had, picks. So what did the Nets do? They shipped guys that were going to teams that wanted to make a playoff run for mid picks. We're not talking about top five picks. Levert mm-hmm. and Allen are in the, in the teens, mid picks, develop them, then use those two guys to get hard. So as much, yeah. so as much as there is the take of Harden wanted to get out of here, he was mm-hmm. in a bad spirits. The Nets put themselves in a position where they could make that trade because right. traditionally, if you have Kyrie and you have a, a Kevin Durant, you don't have assets like the Lakers. They couldn't make that trade because they had to give up everything to get the guy. Harden there. wanted the Nets because of Durant and Kyrie there. And that's exactly. the only reason why so they I, were I, able I, to I, trade Jared Allen and, and Levert for him. Cause that's not enough to get Harden on paper. You know what I mean? Right, but so, they, but they developed those guys and through yeah. the magic of Sean Marks, development and his drafting that enabled them to get Harden in. So as much right. as people get upset that that's a super team, I have to give the Nets credit because they were able to pull off that trade because they did a good job of turning nothing into something that could maneuver to get James Harden. To right. Come That's a good point. Brooklyn. That's a good point. It's not like Miami heat big three where, uh, you know, all one day they had Dwayne Wade and they were an eight seed and got knocked down in the first round. The next day they have LeBron and Chris Bosh. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they were nothing. And now there's something, you know, so I, I get you. They, they, they earned the right to have those guys. They set up their team in a way that Durant and Kyrie wanted to go there. And now we're here and this is crazy. <laughs> yeah, bring give, give, me, give me a little net Nick playoff. I've changed my tooth oh, on that. Yeah, let's I want do it. Now. Let's die like yeah. second let's, round too. Oh man. Oh man. Third round. Second round. And let's third. make it the NBA finals. Fuck it. <laughs> Reseed. Read conference. Like, let's do uh, it. I, I, well, I hope they never do that, by the way. I hope yeah, I they like keep that. it east and west. That, that would be so like stupid. It. But I love the you, play-in. Can you imagine having a first round playoff series between the the Blazers and the the Heat and the travel of a seven game series of the first round? You know, Weird. like it'd be ridiculous. What would it you be know? right now? I'm trying to kind of just curious out of calculations. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just have to figure it out because it's the yeah, that's the that's too much math. Teams, the Nets would be like four versus. I mean, the Nets would probably maybe a matchup with the Knicks, probably mm-hmm. something in that range because there's a lot of good Western probably. Conference teams. It's probably something like that, or Nets yeah. versus Hawks. I bet you it's something like that. We had to guess, mm-hmm. not that it matters. Yeah, something like that. I'm not sure, but yeah, no, it doesn't matter. That'd be a terrible idea. But I also thought the playing tournament would be a terrible idea. But you know what? It's great because it's keeping these teams into it. Mm-hmm. The Wizards would probably tank and shut down Westbrook and Beal and just tank and try to get exactly. a pick. Instead, they're going for it. I mean, Denny got hurt, the rookie. He he's out for a while now. It's unfortunate. But uh, you know, they're they're a scary team to face because in a seven game series, you got to face Beal and Westbrook. You don't want to do that. You know what I mean? The Nets in the first round facing those guys. I mean, like those are two star players. You know what I mean? I know the the Nets will be fine, but if they have a guy down or two in the first round, that's not a team you want to see. You know what I mean? And that's you know. They're good. I mean, all Hornets. These, you can don't worry about them. Well, but ball like, coming back changes things. Yeah, that's true. But he's a rookie. You know what I mean? And he'll be he'll probably just happy to be there too. You know, so. I don't know. It's it's just exciting. It's very exciting to have like real basketball to talk about yeah, in New York. That's true. That's true. It's you know. good for the podcast. I'll admit that. As yeah. Well, it's them. good in general for New York. I mean, I know I know uh, yeah. it's a pandemic, but when sports teams are good in the city, it's it's better for for everybody. Like better for businesses, better for people are happier. There's more to talk about. People are going out and engaging with each other, not just you yeah, know what well, I mean? Like is, once you know, it's yeah, I like it's it's I true. Know. I know, I know, but this is the. Uh, I care about other people, Mike. I mean, no, I'm not just this, a selfish yeah, guy. You know? But this is like, hey, when the Knicks are good, the city's vibrant. When the Nets are good, nobody cares. That nobody does care. Way. No, I'm just kidding. That no, was your. Way that's not say. what I was saying. I'm because it's true. Because if the Mets and Yankees are good, it's it's so much better. If it's just the Yankees, I, I it's not the same. You know I what I mean? Because the Yankees are always I in do, it. You know, it's, whatever. I, sorry to. Well, I actually hey, I'm not sorry to cut you off. I wanted to. Damn it. I do think that the Knicks being good is good for the Nets. And I do, I do mean that because why? And we had Richard Jefferson on and we talked about it. 
both teams playing well at the same time is what's going to, well, I know we've talked about the rivalry, but let's it's be real. Rivalry, if yeah. they're both playing yeah. well at the same time and going head to head and Durant and Randall are having battles and it's becoming like the Knicks have, you know, it's a, a year fight that breaks out and, or something, right? Some shoving match or some shit. Yeah, like that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what's going to garner more net interest. Also we is having, watch those games together. Yeah. having little brother <laughs> in the Knicks. Yeah back back yeah. where they where they are playing against big brother that's going to make i mean i do think that would help the nets and get interest all around because there is a nick interest in the city and a building rivalry with the nets so i think that, like like rj said with us having those mm-hmm. two together being great at the same time would make for some ke- compelling shit because the nets now are in new york Right. It's like it's kind of like a rap beef. Like if you have two two guys like a bigger rapper that's beefing with somebody lower, it raises the profile of the guy that's not as popular as the other guy just having this beef and trying to like, you know, I, you know, I'm not going to start naming rap beefs for you. But like, you know, but it's just people get that because it's just kind of like, you know, it's the Knicks and Nets. It's like, oh, you know, the Nets are not as popular. But you know what? If they're beefing with the Nets, the Knicks, then people are going to pay attention. And then some people, somebody fans that are just like contrarians are going to be like, yeah, you know what? Screw it. Let's screw the Knicks. Let's root for the Nets. You know what I mean? Like, it's just it's just yeah, what happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, it's funny because I, I don't. Uh, I, I like how you said I will tell you the beef, the rappers that beef. Like, like I'm just not going to like go down the line. Of but no, but I but know. there's something I can relate to with it a little bit. Want to, we want me to talk about like Pusha T and Drake? You know what I mean? You want to talk about like? Well, we could do a bonus episode everybody. later if you yeah. want to. If I, you know, uh, the, the, go in the opposite Rap side, episode. turn the track yeah. over, we'll have it. I would see this all the time in radio. It's when uh-huh. you would have the the bigger show and then the show below it, like based on ratings. It was ne- like the little show picking on the big show right. was good because then you could you could create a vibe and a war in a you know a radio war and that helps the littler guy because they're getting notoriety and it's all one yeah. station and it's all the same right person. right yeah, right yeah. which you know but then for the bigger show it's like what do they have to uh, what do they have to gain from this because mm-hmm. they have the higher rating you're now giving attention to somebody else there's nothing to gain from this for them well it's why when you listen to espn radio you always hear them talk about wfan but when wfan you never hear them talk about ESPN. <laughs> you know what i mean right. it's just because WFN has been the king and they're you know a couple times that ESPN wins their ratings but it's usually WFN wins on old shows and it's just that's what it is and that's that's right. why they do it so anyway I, I am a geek for this stuff so if you ever wanted Me to too. talk radio ratings and stuff I'm into it yeah no that's why we get along because I've been obsessed with sports radio since I was a kid yeah. <laughs> interned at Sirius Satellite Radio when I was out of that's college right. at NFL Radio you know that was fun a lot of people don't know that about me a little little tidbit about my my life but uh, anyway, so um, ah, well, let's keep I'm going. Excited. Let's, let, let's, let's, get, let's do open it. your resume and let's read it. Do you have that let's, on your yeah, resume now for your job? No, that you, no, you don't no. keep it on there like a little. No, oh, I'm, I'm in. Cool. I, I'm in finance starter. now, so they don't, they don't care about what I did at Sirius Satellite Radio. I would. If years. I was hiring you and I saw <laughs> that on there, I'd give you. It's on the job. I'd hire you. I don't care about your skill in finances. I want to yeah, know if you can edit and cut a Chicago White Sox highlight. That's what's interesting. Yeah. No, I remember uh, cutting highlights. I would always cut up like uh, and put uh, like my favorite players in the highlight banks. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, Ray for Alston or somebody like that or just like guys like that. They're like, oh, yeah, let's get, hit a three. Yeah, skip to my Lou. There we go. Yeah, get him in there. To my Lou, yeah. <laughs> How did Lou Williams look tonight? Uh, he was pretty good. He was, he. They were telling a story that he was mad about being traded to the Hawks. Like he almost retired. Mike Breen was telling hmm. that story. I didn't know that. That's kind of like Mike Breen knows everything. Man. This guy is just yeah, like, you know. I take his word for it. I mean, maybe he doesn't know anything and he just says it. And maybe you know like, what? They could... <laughs> I have NBA League Pass, so I put on the yeah. game. But I was just, I'm not going to, I didn't want to listen to the Knicks because I thought it would be curious to listen to the other team. So I just find that interesting because I know how you're going to feel about calls. I just think it's, because I always think like uh, ref in games, it, I I have the beholder what you want to think of it. So I wanted to listen to the Hawk game. I didn't realize Vince Carter was doing uh, games with the Hawks. Oh, is he? As mm-hmm. a color, he does. Oh wow! I know he's doing there. ESPN games, random national games. Vince I, was, I don't know if he's doing all the games, but I was like, oh, Vince yeah. Carter was doing the Hawk game. I love how he's Mr. Hawks because he played two games, two two or three seasons, and he was like 40, yeah. mil, 48 years old or whatever he was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, he was there. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. So you want to do the like, um? Oh, well, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just saying? gonna say they were there were some calls they didn't like. Mm. They didn't like the um. The Julius Randle play. They thought either was a, a push uh, towards the end. John Collins ticky tack foul on him, mm. and then uh, what was the other one? Oh, it was Capella in the paint. 
didn't get a call, but they were unhappy about that. Oh, well, there was a weird play with Capella where he slipped and then like fell on his ass and, and uh, they called a foul on the Knicks. It was just like, what, dude, he slipped and he, he got in rows. They didn't that call. At the end of that game, it was very uh, let, let them play. Yeah, no, it I was thought. most of the, yeah, it was the refs, the refs are a mess. I mean, it's, it's, it's such a hard um, game yeah. to ref to I'll you listen know. to you. It is though. I mean, it is. But, I hate you know. Had, but you've had that take after the net Nick game. No, uh, you know what? It's just fuck that call. It's up. Just, uh, they didn't fuck the call. It up. is just, though. But overall, it's, it's such it's a subjective. Just, it's just hard to do this. Now you're all sympathetic. <laughs> oh my god. I'm, I'm not sympathetic. I'm just happy that the Knicks won. That's all yeah, I'm. Uh, uh, I, you know. I just. I just. I'm just I, uh, everybody's a good person today, man. That's all it is. Yeah. You know, everybody's just you know happy. You know. The dog could have. This is the perfect day. If the dog peed on the ground on, in the apartment on the floor, I would have been like, oh, it's okay, man. It's you were okay, due no. for it. You were due for one of these. We had done. I feel like I, I almost want to go back. I would say your win loss splits after. I would say your bad weather fan uh, hosting post Knicks. Not good. No, yeah. No, this was great. And there's obviously been a lot of Nick wins, but it just had been like. Friday. It just had been not nice a that we boring, were boring, boring wins or something or just, like that. Just not yeah. nice we were going to record. I don't know. I just felt like right. this is like the culmination. Like you, this is the most excited you've been going into a bad weather fans show. Correct. Correct. This is very. I'm I'm bouncing off the. But Obi Toppin when they drafted him, I was very excited that night yes. too, because that was just un- unbelievable. I thought they got a steal. I mean, he still might be good, but he's not what I thought he was going to be on draft night yet. <laughs> you know, we'll see. But I, you know, True. early returns are not very good. I'll tell you that. No. But he, he does look. He has looked a little better. He's getting, you know, uh, baby steps here. You know, I don't know yeah. if he's going to turn into Frank Nilakina or if he's going to be anything good. But whatever. Frank played at the end there. Because yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> bizarre, bizarre rotation. At the end of the game, yeah. At the end of the game, Nilakina comes in for defensive purposes. Cole hasn't that. played all game, I get and then that not. A bit. Yeah, which makes sense. He's long. He can he, put his hands up. Defense is different than offense. Right, you come in and nobody's Great nobody's analogy. checking Knox, <laughs> like you know what I mean. Like so, they they, they shoot. yeah, they come in on Randall and then he has this weird shot. Yeah, and nobody cares about Knox. Like that, that was that was strange. That was I would have just put out all shooters, or like I would rather put uh, top it in than Knox because at least top it could spin and get to the you know, throw it at the hoop and he can dunk it in or something. You know what I mean? Like I know I Knox can do that too, but it's double just... team. Knox is open. He can. He's a good yeah. shooter when he's open. That's my only guess. You know better than me, but I don't know. Who knows? That was weird. Uh, anyway. shit. All right. You want to do a Jersey thing? Not really. Quick Jersey? No? No, I do. I'm just giving you a hard time. Sure. <laughs> All right. So you want, I'll pull up a Nets one and let's, and you pull up a next one. Let's, cause there's no, there's obviously no number 58s at all. Are yeah. we 58? I think we're at 58. Yeah. How about I give you a random team and see if you can get it? <laughs> That'd be so bad. That'd be so hard. Mm. You you like? Uh, oh, I got a good one for you. What are your thoughts on the Sonics? <laughs> I actually, the Sonics and the Thunder are my second favorite team. They're my West Coast team. All right, I'm giving you a honest. Sonic tonight, and I can give All you right, a thing after if you want. Okay. Um, can I give you a net real quick before? Yeah, give, give me the net. Go All for right. It. So this guy, number this twenty-one. Up. He's a number twenty-one since he. Uh, this is the twenty-first day of the month. That we're recording this. Kevin Edwards. Nope. He played two years through the Nets, New Jersey Nets, from 08 09 to 09 uh, 10. He started 44 games in uh, 2008 2009 season. Um, yeah. So obviously, like a French bench player. Went to DePaul. Went to DePaul. Yeah. And I'm struggling with these. Who is it? Yeah, man. Bobby Simmons. Yeah. I thought you would get that. I, I that was yeah. the one like, right in your wheelhouse. Was Kevin Edwards the 21? Let's see. Kevin Edwards. What year was he? Yeah, yeah, he was. 94, 98. All right, okay. I got Kevin. Go. See, that, that 2000 stuff, too recent. My brain was mm. better functioning back in, in then. All right, I got number 22 for the Sonics. I'll give you a clue. He's in the NBA. Still? That's a good clue. 22. Oh, Jeff Green. Yep. There we go. See? Yeah, stuff. Great. yeah, but Jeff I kind of guess that awesome. because I know you're obsessed with him right now. So that well, was and like, there's yeah. only two. There's only two Sonics left in the NBA. Do you know the other Kevin one? Durant, Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant, and Nets, Jeff yeah. both on the Nets, and uh, Nate McMillan, coach of the Hawks. There you go, That's right? Sonic. All right, <laughs> he was Mr. Nate, Sonic. Though. Yeah, go for it. Even his firing was weird from uh, from Indiana. That was, oh, Indiana. Yeah, Indiana. that was strange. That was a weird one. Yeah. Um. All right, here we go. 
I gave you 33. Look at this number. Okay, I'll give you um, uh, 20, number 25. 25. Oh, that's a tough number. He played, oh, there's one particular Nick. He played for the Knicks from 93 to 95. Uh, and, Corey Grant? Um, I don't see Corey Grant. And I'll give you, I'll, I'll make this real easy. I'll give you another clue. Uh, he's a, we taught, he's Doug a Christie? Coach. Um, <laughs> he's a coach no. of an NBA team now. Coach of an NBA team now? Mm hmm. 93 to 90. We talked about his team on Bad Weather Fans tonight. His son, we talked about too. Last week, we talked about his son. But we talked about his son as well on Bad Weather Fans tonight. Tonight? Yeah. So we talked about him. We talked about his team that he coaches and his son, we talked about as well to start this episode. His, or now I'm going to make it real easy. His son was on the Knicks earlier in the year. And his dad's a coach in the NBA. Oh, Doc Rivers. Okay, <laughs> I was just like, yeah, that I would. I don't know why I didn't get that. Yeah, that was bad of me, man. I should. Well, have after those clues. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. Well, Doc Rivers, like, he was a good Nick, but he wasn't really yeah. a good Nick. He was just kind of like there. I was like, why do we? That was a good question. I thought we should have kept Mark Jackson. Like, Doc Rivers it was not a very likable Nick, but yeah. you know, he was, but he wasn't. I don't know. You know, I would rather have Mark Jackson. That was a bad trade. Anyway. And Charles Smith. That wasn't good. So poll question time. I bet you know the answer to this one. This one was actually the other day. So I answered it, it and before... you yelled at me. Did I? Oh, maybe mm -hmm. I did. Oh, yeah, I think I did. So it goes, Knicks fans. Oh, I said, Knicks fans. Nobody in their wildest dreams, myself included, expected this season to be this great, but it has now probably changed our perception on what a successful season is. Successful. I can't speak. What is your realistic expectation for the rest of the season? Explain your answer or tell me if your, your answer is not listed. 60 plus and losing the first 60 plus and went around play in tournament and lose. So losing the first round, uh, play, oh, play in tournament and lose in the playing tournament or play in tournament and get in. So six seed losing first six seed plus went around playing tournament, but losing the playing tournament, play in tournament and get in. What do you think? One or seed and, and win around six. Yeah. And went around. That's their expect, people's expectations now 44%, but it was close to six seed plus and losing first. So pretty much, Knicks fans right now expect to be the sixth seed and over. It's kind of like everything changes because before the season, if we said that we were going to go for the sixth seed, I'd be like, hey, I'm happy to get in the playing tournament. Just, you know, show up, maybe get in the regular playoffs and, you know, it'll be, that'd be very successful. But now, especially after this eight game winning streak now, it's just like we're, we're you know, I, 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 it's, it's wild that that happens. You know what I mean? But like when the yeah. season's over, you can read, you can look at the, look at it. Okay. It was a successful season. That was great. But and while you're going through it, you want blood. I want blood right now. Let's right. keep going. You know, yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird one because you want that. Right. But at the same time, like if they were to get into the playoffs and we're a five seed and losing six to the Celtics. Right. You can't be like, oh, we didn't meet our expectations at the same time. Yeah. But things, you know, Depends how they lose too. I mean, if they get in the first round and get swept, then I'll be like upset. You know? What I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, but I'm saying like, <laughs> yeah. yes. Like I don't think. But at least they broke the streaks. That's that was think, what the season yeah. was about. You know? Yeah. No, it's it's a, it's a success. Now it's just now it's now it's, let's let's just go like you said, go for blood. You know, make this yeah. a special year. Well, the whole thing is, it's just you, you want to, the point of this year and why I was so upset in the off season that they didn't go for it a little more, like get a Bogdanovich or, you know, I wanted other guys that didn't end up as well as good, but uh, because I wanted them to just get the streaks, get the stench off this organization, you know what I mean? Just change mm -hmm. it all together. Like, yeah, and you that's know, gone. And that's gone now. And uh, unless they, they tank the rest of this year and, and go on some crazy losing streak and miss it, but which I don't think will happen, but like, Get rid of the streak of, of missing in the playoffs. Get rid of uh, the talking head saying, oh, the Knicks stink, the Knicks stink, the Knicks stink. Get, stop being a punchline. Let that go back to the Kings. You know what I mean? They have the longest playoff drought already, and the Suns too, but the Suns and the Knicks are going to be in the playoffs. The Kings yep. are going to be the laughing stock of the NBA. Darren, Darren Fox is going to be a Nick. No, I'm just kidding. That's the, that's the guy to go for. I've been saying that. And let's let's go. Let's see what happens. We have the assets. Let's 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 try to win some games. Hopefully the Mavericks continue to tank and and fall out of the playoffs and the playing tournament. Yeah, I mean, Knicks are in a good place. Like if I'm not to, like I'll get ahead of myself because next year Randall continue to develop Barrett quickly 
Randall's draft. not paid yet next year either. He's has a team option that they're going to pick up. Obviously, you know, obviously. I mean, they can still so, extend him. But you can but, see, you yeah. can see it building. You can see, right? Like next year, you'll go into the season and be like, you're going to be like, I, my expectations are to win a round. Yeah, and and I it's RJ Barrett is also the key because he's 20 years yeah. old and look at how good he is already. And, yeah, he's the key. He has his off nights, and but the, the potential is there, man. It's 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 sure. crazy. All right, so a couple of shout outs and uh, responses. Uh, so we have. The Mad Good Nick show. They have a big YouTube show, uh, but this is their Twitter account responding. He goes, I think we're going to be a tough matchup and a difficult out for any team that plays us. We might just get get a round win. Not many teams are built for the grind for the grinded out slow down half court 48 minute war that is the playoffs. Only two teams that give me concern are the 76ers and the Heat, which is surprising you didn't mention your team. Um, then we have Stefan Bishop. Well, I don't think it's, I don't Bishop. think that's surprising. That's yeah. We have Stephon Bishop. That's Stephon Bishop. He goes fifth seed facing the fourth seed Hawks. We beat them to advance the second round. So that's the expectation for him. What were you going to say? Go ahead. No, I don't think it's – if the team not going to mention the Nets, I think that's not surprising. Yeah. Um, then we go – we have my, my guy, Adolfo Lopez. He's at L-O-M-I-N-A-T-T-I. He goes, got to look at Celtics and Hawks and the Hawks' remaining schedule, but don't see why we can't reasonably push for the 4-5 or five when – and then we got a shot to win a round. All depends on what happens out west. Oh, like when they go on the West Coast trip. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, I was like, out west, like, what does that have to do with us in the playoffs? You know what I mean? But my mind is going crazy. It's midnight. Give me a break. So then we have uh, all things Knicks. He's at Nick Savage. Fifth seed and win the round would be amazing with an exclamation. Amazing. If we have to play a healthy top three team in the East, that will be quite the challenge, LOL, which is true. So that's all the shout outs I got for, for now. But, you know, it's, it's, it's exciting, man. Fans are excited. This is also before the, the game tonight. So this, yeah. I put this poll out on Monday. So after they had won, or before they even won the seventh game, I guess they played on Monday, right? Or was it Sunday? No, Sunday, because they played the, the one o'clock game versus the Pelicans. So uh, it's, uh, I'm freaking pumped up, man. <laughs> pumped up. Or did they do back to back? I don't know. Everything's meshing together. Who knows? Whatever it was. Don't, don't when you're this me. good, you're winning this many games, are all the same, Alex. Yeah, so you don't winning need to every know game, anybody. Exactly. Anything. You don't need to. It's a Nick Town. It's a Nick Night. Enjoy it. Just enjoy it. World. Your jersey. Nah, it's a Nick Town. It's Nets World. You're getting it mixed up. John Stark's your favorite. There you go. That's what you got. Let's do that for the for the screenshot. I'm at. uh, No, if don't. (laughs) Unless my face is good. Oh God. (laughs) Want to pose? You want to pose again? (laughs) Anyway. You're at what? My You're at Mike Delivers the Pod. I'm yeah, at Nick Central on from, Twitter. I'll, I'll hear from the Nick fan. You can tweet me if you've uh, if you made it this far. I know you're really a fan of the pod, guys. At Mike yeah. Delivers Pod. Uh, you know we should put our Twitter handles in the beginning of the show next time. I think that'd be smarter. Yeah, well, we had but a good. Producer. I think if you're listening, yeah. you follow us on Twitter. So uh, you know, most That's of the true. time, unless you're close personal friends of ours. Well, there's a lot of people that listen to the show and they always at you like, "Hey, love it, keep it up." And I'm like, I got. I'll be though? honest. Like, I'm very insecure about that. And we, uh, we got to send Mike some flowers, me. guys. You got to send Mike some flowers. Mike's great. The show would be nothing without him as well. It's we all need true. the He's two of us. Lying. Yeah. <laughs> it's the two man show. It's not a one man show. You know, we, I, I wouldn't, I would never do this and I would never be as good at this without you. And that's for sure. That's for real. That's serious. You know, so yeah, I agree. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm, I'm a, I agree. <laughs> You're not wrong. Not, not patting myself on the back. Cause I don't think I'm anything, but like, you know, this is all fun and games and, and having a good time. So yeah, you're, you're, but you're I, fine. I would never do this without, without you. No, problem. no it's a, it's very enjoyable. You got very yes. good opinions and you're very growing on Twitter. Yes, yes, yes. But I'm not as annoying now that you know me. Right. So no, I, um, yes, I'd agree with that. You're annoying. Cause then I remember that you're just you. And I just people who follow me and interact with me all the time, like guy Coonies and like all these other guys, like they and, and Shannon and um Coach Fa and Danny V, like they 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 all like they get me and they they understand like when I make a joke, like they don't get mad. But then when people get mad, and like I, I can't help but like mess with them. You know what I'm saying? And that's why mm-hmm. pe- people who get me, like they don't they don't get mad at the things I say. They're just like, ah, it's just Alex being a fucking well, I think on a smaller <laughs> scale, it's similar. To, you know, people that interact with me know I'm a big goofball. Like I don't yeah i don't think much. But your your sense of humor doesn't translate well to twitter that's or the, text that's the, yeah or text it's just like, but it's really about? good on a podcast yes it is really good it's on a podcast. really good right <laughs> yes it's incredible no it is yes yeah, it's, it's incredible it's uh some good stuff 
All right, Alex, it's All been right. Bad Weather Fans, episode number 58 with Mike and Alex. Knicks, winners tonight. They defeated the Atlanta Hawks in overtime. Knicks make it eight in a row. Nets fall to the Toronto Raptors. Stay one game behind the Philadelphia 76ers for the one seed in the Eastern Conference because Philly fell to the Suns. And, of course, the big news surrounding the Nets from this past week, LaMarcus Aldridge retires. And also, James Harden, not knowing when he's going to come back. A lot of mystery on that front. So, a lot At least they know where Kyrie about. is, right? They know where Kyrie is. That's and there's a good, the Kyrie good Irving jokes as they come in because, you know, the Nick fan can't help themselves. Not a joke. <laughs> can't help themselves joke. because they, they, they go to their playbook. <laughs> Teams won eight games in a row. Uh, so they make a joke about Kyrie Irving, who's I having probably the best year of his good. career. But you know what? You know, when, when the Nick fan IQ raises, maybe we'll be able to have a, a real civil conversation about that. Uh, so, sorry, we ended off on a bad note now. So, you know, now I'm upset. Number 21, Kevin Edwards. Yeah, there you go. I'm just kidding. I was going to be 21 and Brian Scalabrini, right? So that was another one you could have Yeah, done. Veal. I've got the, yeah. the Veal Scalabrini. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, he bothers me because he says he's more of a Celtic yeah. than a net. He's I Mr. Celtic that. now. That's because he's a Eight Irish points. guy and they all love the Irish they guys. They won a title Boston. there with uh, that other, whatever that guy's name is, Paul Pierce. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Won a title there. What did he do? <laughs> he waved the towel. Yeah. Like, you know, like that's, that's what he did. Anyway, bad weather fans. Don't forget, guys, if you haven't seen it, go to YouTube, try to type in bad weather fans. You can get the YouTube version. Um, Alex, we'll see you mm-hmm. next time. And we'll <laughs> week to week, we got a lot of fun coming up here on this podcast. So check it out, subscribe, download. Uh, the playoffs are coming around the corner. So this is it time. This is kind of the appetizer to the big deal. So good shit, right? Very all exciting. On that. Enjoy your victory tonight, Alex. I'll talk oh, to I you am. Later. See ya. <laughs>